This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan. With your host, Nancy Smitham. And get the latest news from Alpena Community College with Dr. Olin Joyton. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. My first two guests today are both here to talk about the Military Support Community Committee in our community. I have Bob Kraft <laughs> and Colonel Roberts. Hi and welcome. Thank you, Nancy. Bob, as we were talking before this, um, we got started taping, you've been doing this for over 28 years, and back in the day, I was on the Military Affairs Committee at the time, what it was called, and I saw firsthand the people that it brought to our communities. They brought their families, they stayed at the base and camped, they ate in our restaurants, they bought gas, they used our communities. So I know how important it is, was, and is to bring all those families to our community. It's very important, and uh, this community is, uh, relies on that military base out there, our CRTC, uh, heavily. Uh, it's, it's a huge economic impact on our community, and the Military Support Committee is proud to be able to just add a little, another reason for these units to come up here to Alpena. They have a choice on where to train, and I did uh, talk to one of the unit commanders that was up here, and he said that this uh, reception that we provide for these units was a factor when they were discussing where to train. So that made me feel very good that we're on the right track and doing the right thing, and we have been for a lot of years, I guess. Okay. And Colonel Roberts, I know that for you to be um, a commander of the CRTC, you must be very thrilled to have the community welcome you and want you and your troops to be here so much. Oh, definitely so. And, and just like Bob said, I, I think you know, the, the, the community support in general, not just the committee and, and those functions, I'll, I will say that we, you know every unit that comes in and trains we do a survey on the way out the door of what they like, what they dislike about the base. And I will tell you that consistently, you know, we get feedback f from, you know, the Marines, the sailors, the airmen that come through here. They're out in town, someone buys their coffee for them, everybody comes up and shakes their hand. That what you'll see in a lot of training venues around America, sometimes the community, it gets a little, it's a little noisy, you know, there's a couple, there's some, you know, people driving around, it makes noise, the roads get tore up a little bit. And so sometimes the community is not as welcoming, and, but here people are shocked. It's, it's, it's that good. I mean, there's, it's a positive thing every time they're out in the community. And then the receptions that we do, the units, you know, are amazingly surprised for that support um, and, and, what, and what they get. And, and, the, and the people that show up and shake their hand, hand out a couple of Alpena sweatshirts, buy them a beer, uh, it really does impact the units and it does incentivize them to come and train here. Even my grandchildren say when an airplane flies over a house, they say, that's the sound of freedom. That's, that's what we say when we hear it. That's how pleased we are to have them. Yes. And now what is the future of our base and our community? We're always nervous about that because you hear about bases closing and changes in the military around the world. So what's our future? Well, and I'll say that it is in flux at this time. I mean, we, we, we did go through some from stru four structure cuts. We lost 35 full-time military positions on the base over the last 18 months. Um, so that's about a million dollars in payroll wow, from the local huge. community and, and those are families and, and when you look at the demographics of the military members, you know, in their 20s and 30s, married predominantly, a couple of kids in the local school, you know, that's something that kind of hits across the community. Spiraling effects. Yes. So um, I will say on a po very positive note, I've been highly engaged in Washington, D.C. Um, I was just there last week. I just got off with a phone conference this morning. and. I think they realized that that went a little too far for what our mission set is and how important it is. Um, so I think you're going to see some of that moving back in. And I think, uh, I would say that the mission of the base is, is very safe at this point. Um, we're very successful at what we do. The, the resources that this particular base brings, um, with, especially with the airspace. I mean, oh, that's yes. the beauty. Yes. And you sometimes living up in Alpena, you're kind of in the middle of nowhere. But for what I do for a living, that's perfect. You know, with the ranges and the airspace that we have here. Really, it's the second largest airspace volume in all of the United States of America. Amazing. And it's the biggest one east of the Mississippi. So when you see airframes and where they want to come and train, and that's something that people don't really realize is, you know, we have the units that come to the base. We do about 10,000 individuals a year come wow. through the base for training. Um, but every single day, you know, we have bombers flying from North Dakota. We have aircraft from Louisiana. We have jets come out of the guard in Vermont. People from all over America are coming up here and flying up above us right now using that airspace, um, which gives us utilization, which, which keeps us safe and keeps us open. Is there anything we as citizens, private citizens in our community can do to make sure that the base stays the viable option that it is? 
Well, yes, I, you know, I think, you know, like we spoke to, the, the, you know, the community outpouring of support, I mean, so the, the troops see that and that motivates those commanders to come here and train because okay. they know their people have a, a very positive experience. Um, and they also, and I would say, just even with the elected representatives at times, when you're having those discussions, you know, we, we'll see in the newspaper if the VA is going to bring in a new clinic. And, and, and sometimes I think, you know, and I'm the new guy in town. You know, Bob's in here 28 years doing this stuff. <laughs> I just got here in September. Um, I think sometimes we get used to things the way they are. Yes. And we, we don't really realize what's at risk out there. And, you know, if you look across the state of Michigan over the last few decades, if you look at Wordsmith, K.I. Sawyer, um, if you look at the cuts down in Battle Creek, Michigan, yes. at the Gar base, you know, the military infrastructure has shrunk, and Michigan is honestly about 49th out of 50 states wow. as far as federal dollars that come back into the state for military spending. So we're down at the bottom, um, and so, you know, it's an at-risk thing. So it is something you probably should discuss with those representatives that, you know, this thing is important to us, and, you know, the state of Michigan pays in a lot of money to the national government to, to provide for the common defense of the United States, and, and part of that is having some of that infrastructure in our state. Okay, well, Bob, I know you have a couple more receptions coming up, a chance for the local people to come out, like Colonel Roberts said, and welcome them, let them know we want them to be here so that when they have a choice, they choose Alpena. Yes. We when do are have, those receptions? Uh, they're, they're wide open for, for our guests, and we do put it in the paper, July 31st in August. I don't recall the date on the last one. Um, Watch the paper. In, in August, yep. yes. We, we publicize it, and we would love to have the community come out. And the purpose of the receptions is, one, to th thank the the airmen and airmen and women and for training here and also to get them into the community and give them an opportunity to see what Alpena is all about and maybe they'll come back with their families which many do yes and also to say thank you for their military service so it's three strong purpose for the the receptions and we would love to have a large turnout from the community yes. uh, the cost is ten dollars and uh, we provide a buffet uh, two drink tokens and uh, the buffet has been for the last few years totally provided by the Sanctuary Inn, Amazing. free of charge. Um, we had 175 people wow. uh, from the base, plus the community people, plus our, com our uh, committee and things like that. So close to 200 people were at the last one and they totally fed everybody free of charge. Wow. And that's amazing and we truly appreciate the support of the Sanctuary and we couldn't do it without that. No. Uh, we give away a lot of prizes okay. um, and we do get great support from the businesses in the community and we mention those at each reception uh, who donate the prizes and also donate money to help us pay for the receptions and the, and the drinks that we buy the, the military people. So if anyone has any questions or thinks, hey, this is something I want to be a part of, um, they can contact the Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce, yes. 354-4181. That's right. And uh, just say you want some information on Military Support Committee, and they'll be glad to help they'll you out. They'll be glad to help them out. Ashley or Jackie there are at all the receptions, and, and they have all the answers, I'm sure. They're very involved, and uh, we'd love to see a great turnout from the committee. Thank you both very much for being here, and keep up the good work out there. Thank and Rob, good to see you again. Good to see you, Nance. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be right back with Anika Wagner from Friends Together following these messages. Hi, welcome back. My last guest today is Anika Wagner from Friends Together. Hi, Anika. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. I know you must Great. be getting crazy. The big event for Friends Together, their biggest fundraiser, Five for Friends, is coming up, I think, in three weeks. Yes. Kind of going crazy, um, tons of things. And, you know, Friends Together is a very personal thing for us. My husband is a cancer survivor, and we've been blessed to be um, get support from Friends Together. The love, the support, the gas cards, the help, just walking in the door and feeling good. And my husband goes to Five for Friends, um, excuse me, he goes to Guys Like Us support group, and he, he, he comes home and he's happy and he talks to other people. Excuse me, it's a wonderful thing. So this fundraiser is what raises the money for all those great things to help our community. Correct, yes. The <coughs> Fight for Friends campaign is a campaign that um, counts on our, uh, our community here to help support so that we're able to do the things that we do. Um, a lot of people don't realize that Friends Together is responsible for 40% of the transportation of all the Alpena Cancer, Cer cancer Center visits. Yes. And um, if it wasn't for the vans on the road being able to drive and um, we do the five county region, it's not just Alpena, we're going Oscoda, we're going Roger City, we're going, you know, all different directions and getting people to their appointments. And without having the fundraising campaign and without the support um, of the community, it just wouldn't be possible to do all of it. 
It wouldn't be. And I know we have some events coming up that we want yes. to talk about, first of all. Yes. First of all, I can talk about my event, Docs yes. at Rock. It'll be this coming Wednesday, the 20th, at the Fresh Palette. Mm -hmm. I have 10 wonderful doctors in our community who are going to wait on people and be servers and turn all their tips over to friends together. We have Dr. Larkins and Dr. Weeks playing music. We have Josh Doobie and Charlie Madison playing music. Fun time. There'll be uh, raffle tickets available, 50-50 um, tickets, and friends... Buy for Friends, those wonderful t-shirts will be for sale, a fun yes. time. My name is on all the posters and my number, call me for reservations. Yes, um, that's going to be um, a great event. Another one that's coming up is on Sunday, May 24th. Um, that's going to be the Guys Like Us support group is doing a pig roast. It's right there at the Friends Together Center, um, right there in the parking lot um, where they uh, have a meal planned. And, there's and we just sold out be, last year. Yeah, it, I think there was over 400 people that came last year. Um, there will be tickets, t-shirts, all the different things for sale at that event as well. And then coming up just a few days after that on the 26th, um, Ripley um, Big Boy is a great supporter. Oh, they are. They do wonderful things in our community, but they um, are letting us do a celebrity server night. So we, um, that is actually the Tuesday night support group is putting on that one. Okay. Um, they will be down there serving and all of the tips and percentage of the proceeds from the dinners will go back to friends together. Okay. We also have one Pizza Hut is supporting us on June 1st for a celebrity server night. We have the direct skate shop is doing um, a disc golf Ooh. on June 13th. And the other one in June that's scheduled right now is the Alpena High School yearbook. Um, the kids and Mrs. Paula Gerke are doing a color fun run Ooh. that will be a lot of fun. And that one I believe is on June 4th. So okay. there are a lot of activities. I hope I didn't miss one, but I think that's all of them that are coming up here in the next few weeks to and get the involved. main event. Yes, now the big main event is on Friday, June 5th. Put that poster um, up so everyone can see it. Um, Friday, June 5th, that is our main event. It's a celebration event to, one, um, bring everybody together and support the, the cancer patients and survivors and families and, and that type of thing. Um, but it's also to thank our community because without what the community does, we couldn't do what we do. And the volunteers. There are oh, so yes. many volunteers, including yourself, that put through up so much time and efforts to host events and to host um, just selling raffle tickets, selling t-shirts, just getting involved. And without them, none of it would be possible. So it's, it's a twofold, you know, support those who need our support and also show appreciation to everyone who makes it possible. And it's Friday, June 5th. Yes. It's from 6 to 10. It's at the Alpena Band Shell, a change of venue this year. Yes. Bring your lawn, lawn chairs. Lawn chairs, yes. That is a big thing. So there's not a lot of seating with the big hill that's there, but there are going to be three food vendors. There will be two beer tents. We have children's activities, including a bouncy house, and Home Depot is a wonderful supporter yes. of ours. Home Depot will be bringing children activities to do. I believe they're doing bird houses, if I'm not mistaken, what they decided this year. Um, so if it wasn't for all of that, there will be a band, the Legacy Band will be yes. performing at the event. Um, we have um, check presentations that will be going on for all of the different teams that have raised money for us. They'll be able to present their checks and show the community what they've done to support us. So there's a lot of fun activities planned. And I know there's still many, many opportunities for volunteers. We have 50-50 yes. tickets you could sell. Yes. Um, if you have friends, if you want to stop by and pick up a packet of 25 and sell them, you know, wonderful. All the money stays right here locally in our town. I know for next week for friends, to, um, for my um, Docs at Rock, I could use volunteers. I know for the pig roast, we always need additional volunteers. volunteers. Um, the night of the event, the day of the event, to set up signs and posters and help get everything set up, we need volunteers. Yes. And the best way is to contact friends together or drop in a very warm yes. and friendly place. Yes, if they want to give us a call, it's 356-3231. Um, we would be glad to give them different options that they could do. There's also t-shirts if anybody's interested. Um, many of the businesses are um, uh, getting their employees yes. together and they're buying the t-shirts and we're trying to get as many people in the community to wear their t-shirt on that day. Um, Mayor Walgoria has actually declared Friday, June yes. 5th as give a hand to your friends with Neighbor Day. And so, um, uh, your friends with cancer day. Um, so we are going to try to get as many people as possible to wear their t-shirts and just show support and um, show their involvement in their community on that day. So we do have t-shirts still for sale. 
There will be a flood of orange down yes. at the band shell. Yes. And once again, it's free for everyone. Come on down, listen to the music. There will be food and beverages you can purchase. There are other things going on. Mm -hmm. Please come down and just unite with your community to as we all band together to offer support for families being affected by cancer. Yes, absolutely. We look forward to it and are hoping for just a great turnout this year. And I'm sure we will have one. And yes. also back to Friends Together for a moment. Mm -hmm. There are so many different support groups and so many different ways you could volunteer or help. And if you know someone out there whose lives are touched by cancer and they're, they're not support kind of people, just let them know that, yes, this is the kind of support group that your loved one should be coming to. Speaking with people who have cancer, people who are professionals, um, all the wonderful programs that Friends Together puts on in our community. You know, come on down, give a call. It's so easy just to call on the phone and say, hey, I have a question. If you don't have the answer, you certainly do get it for them. Yes, and it, it's amazing the people who say when they're first diagnosed or someone in their family is first diagnosed, where they don't know where to turn, they don't even know where to start. They're, the, it, it's an overwhelming experience and they don't know where to start and how quickly once they, they become a part of Friends Together between the other people who yes. are involved in the support groups and have been there and know, um, and Judy and Bill and Melissa, they're also at the office that are just involved in so many things and have answers phone numbers. Yes. There's just so many ways that, that they can be helped, even if it's as small as a gas card to help get down downstate or whatever it would be. There are so many answers that people do not realize that they can get easily just by making the call and, and calling or and coming to a support group or just yes. coming in and visiting with one of us there at the office. And the number to Friends Together is? 356-3231. Okay, looking forward to seeing you next week yes. and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you, you too. Please stay tuned for Dr. Olin Joynton following these messages. Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Talk of the Town. I'm Olin Joynton, president of Alpena Community College. My guest this morning, Rachel Berzak, sexual assault advocate for Shelter Incorporated here in Alpena. Welcome to the show, Rachel. Thanks. Great to have you here. How about a little background on you, uh, where you grew up and went to school and, and how you uh, came to Alpena? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I grew up in Sterling Heights, Michigan, so Metro Detroit area. Um, and then I went to college at Michigan State University. Um, where I studied psychology, communication, and gender studies. Um, and I sort of, I got into doing this kind of advocacy work while there. Um, MSU has a sexual assault crisis intervention response team um, that's a volunteer program. So I sort of learned all about this work there. Um, and several years later, got an opportunity to move up here. Um, the application, or not the application, but you know, the, the job posting came across my desk and I've been wanting to move to Alpena or some place north of big cities. Yeah. Um, I needed a little bit more nature in my life. Well, you sure got it. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I love it. I love the trees. I love the lake. It, it makes doing this work a lot more peaceful. It's great sometimes. to be up here and, and uh, yeah. it's a wonderful to have you here. Uh, applying your talents to the situations uh, in, that where we have uh, uh, certainly a considerable need here yeah. in our town and in our region. Uh, well, that's great. Well, you and your colleagues from Shelter Inc. worked very uh, well together with ACC during the month of April to uh, have some activities connected with uh, Sexual Assault Awareness mm -hmm. Month. And uh, uh, some of my recall are the uh, forum in the middle of the month where you and uh, I believe four other panelists uh, uh, made presentations, answered questions uh, from, the, from the audience. Uh, that was very well done. We had the candlelight vigil mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you recited, uh, did a, an amazing poem and you yes. recited in an amazing way. Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, that's just an unforgettable experience. My family and I love poetry and uh, great performance there. Thank you. And, and we honored the victims and mm -hmm. uh, uh, just intensified the awareness, uh, had some community members in for that uh, of, of the issues. Um, let's see, what else did we do? <laughs> I know, it's hard to remember. Yeah. Now, it all happened so fast. Um, I think the other big event that we did was the screening of the hunting ground, that's right, which we that's did at right. ACC, and then that's we had right. the Q&A afterwards. That's right, that's right. So a uh, very robust program, and yeah. this was in connection with ACC's uh, ongoing efforts now for about a year to come into compliance and then some with the Violence Against Women Act of 2013 and uh, 
Um, you've helped us do that. I uh, also have to pay credit to people at the college like Carolyn Absolutely. Doust, mm -hmm. uh, Nancy Saya, who've been in the forefront of uh, working with our attorney, Karen Bennett, to yes. make our policies go right and then all the implications of implementing those policies mm -hmm. uh, uh, that involve training, publicity, bringing attention to the issue, resources, investigation procedures, and so on. So we feel like uh, because of you and all the others, we're in really good shape, uh, but there's always more to do. Um, uh, how about a little overview of Shelter Incorporated? What is your mission and how do you try to fulfill it in our area? Great question. Um, so Shelter works with survivors of domestic or dating violence, sexual violence, or stalking, um, or any combination of those things. Um, we serve Alpena County, Montmorency County, Presque Isle, Alcona, and Iosco counties. So we cover a pretty wide area. Um, five counties, especially in rural Michigan, is pretty expansive. Um, my car's not pleased with me <laughs> these past few weeks, but um, so we cover a lot of areas and we have everything from a safe house in the Alpena area to a 24-hour crisis help and support line. Um, so anytime, day or night, even on Christmas, you can call and somebody will be there to provide support on the other end. Um, we also have like non-residential advocacy. So that's pretty much anybody who doesn't need temporary emergency shelter but is still in need of all of our other services or some of our other services. Does that get involved with the legal process too, the pressing charges? Working yeah. With attorneys. Yep. We have um, a legal advocate who can help um, with those processes, explain personal protection orders, mm -hmm. um, different things like that. And then um, we have housing advocates who help people find um, either temporary or permanent housing. Um, we help a lot with like employment or education advocacy, medical advocacy. Um, one of the things that our sexual assault um, team does is if somebody goes to the hospital for a forensic exam, um, we can respond there as well and provide support to them at that time. Um, if they want to go to the police station or during court, we provide um, accompaniment there. Pretty much any sort of empathy, support, um, listening, or problem solving that a survivor needs help with, they can call us for that. Well, uh, from what I understand, a, a person who's undergoing sexual uh, abuse or uh, uh, any other kind of violence gets into a kind of mentality in, in which in, in so many cases they're deterred from even stepping forward to recognize a problem and report the problem. Why don't you, yeah, as a psychology major, I bet you understand <laughs> that pretty well. So why don't you go into a little bit of that and then maybe more importantly, how people can overcome those inhibitions mm -hmm. uh, and step forward when they need to. Sure. Um, well, the biggest thing I think is once somebody has been traumatized in this way, and it is, it is trauma, um, and it is jarring, um, once somebody's been through something like this, just the feeling, the feeling of safety is something that's very hard to come by. Um, and any time we are met, a survivor story is met with disbelief, um, with why questions, well, wh why would you even like go there then if you, you know, knew this kind of stuff was going on? Um, different stuff like that, it really, um, it detours people because you get the impression that not only is nobody believing what's happening or what has happened to me, but um, some people are even saying, well, if it did happen, then it's my fault because I was in the wrong place or I was wearing the wrong thing or I was drinking um, or I was just making friends with the wrong kind of people. Um, so really, as um, I think as a community, we can do a service to survivors by just listening and believing um, and telling them that it's not their fault, it's not our job to become Sherlock Holmes and discover, you know, poke holes in their story. Um, it's it's our role to be supportive um, and to make sure that they can get help and that they're I think safe. even with the question of resistance, there's, uh, as I understand, some kind of brain function during a rape that just shuts down and, yes. and prevents a person yep. from resisting in, Absolutely. in many cases. It's called tonic immobility. Yes. Um, so what happens in any sort of, any, any kind of threat that's presented to us, our brain, we've all heard of like fight or flight. Um, we sort of, our brain assesses, can we combat this threat mm -hmm. and come away from it on top or will we not be able to overcome it, in which case we might want to 
just hightail it out of there. Um, but what happens with uh, sexual assault in particular is um, tonic immobility where both of your fight or flight systems are activated at the same time. And what happens is actually a third response, which people are just now starting to talk about, which is a freeze response. I see. We need to wrap it up. Uh, how about for the audience members who might be in this kind of situation, mm -hmm. uh, what's the contact information for Shelter Inc.? You can reach us. Um, our office hours are um, 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. However, our 1-800 um, number is available 24 hours a day. I wish I knew that by heart, but I am bad and I don't. But uh, in um, the phone book. Yes, we are in the phone book. All of our information is online. You can look us up fairly easily. Great. Well, thank you so much for being on the program today and even more so for the great work that you and your colleagues are doing here in our community and the collaboration uh, that has uh, done great things at ACC uh, over the past month. Thank you so much. You're welcome. This has been Talk of the Town with Nancy Smitham and Dr. Owen Joyden. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, visit our website at www.wbkb11.com and click on Community. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.